a hint of an idea that you can give us as to where the show is heading? The show always has to have, I think, that they're, they're learning that it has to have some kind of a nemesis a similar to the way, you know, Holmes had a Moriarty and they're, 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 they're going to look for an over, um, some kind of um, fantastic situation, character, artifact that will create a journey for the 13 episodes that we're about to do, mm -hmm. 12, 13. And um, I think that that, I have an idea of what that's going to be and I can't reveal it, but I do know that it's incredibly imaginative, it's really exciting, and it's very interesting, humorous, and, and dangerous at the same time. They walk this very great, beautiful tightrope between suspense and, and comedy, and if they fall off on either side of it, it either becomes cute or simply like every other show. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when it's at its most suspenseful, they get funny, and when it's at its most comical, they get serious and, and suspenseful. And, and I think that they found a... Um, they found a route, a journey for the season that will be really interesting mm. in that way. So it'll be, uh, it's, you know what's great about um, uh, when, it, when something really works in this area, you can say that it's both surprising and inevitable. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that that's what they're going for in the way that they set up these journeys. You go, of course that had to happen, and how surprising shocking that it's happened. <laughs> you think of your, your childhood, which is extraordinary, and your parents must have instilled in you an absolute treasure uh, for life itself. Um, and then you say to them, okay, I'm, give, I'm taking this gift that you somehow have given to me, and I'm going to act. Um, where does that come from? And what does it mean all for you? Um, it, it, it doesn't it doesn't amount to one thing that I can really uh, sum up because it, it's meant different things at different times in my life. You know, are you a dad? Uh, not not yet, although I'm getting married, so I'm, I'm, it's around the corner, I'm sure. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. When you have kids, um, you have this different stages of, of development. They always think, like, they always feel like they're going to last forever. You know, the stage when they're infants and suddenly they transition into these toddlers and and these desires their own wills and every stage seems like it's going to last forever and it's a constantly evolving and changing thing because it's a profound relationship your relationship between nurture friendship parenting um, financial emotional uh, psychological responsibilities and it's an evolving thing that's not that sometimes is a devolving thing as much as we want it not to be and I think when you have a profound relationship with what you do I'm not talking about profoundly boring relationship with what you do <laughs> or profoundly onerous relationship like the Israelites building pyramids mm -hmm. you know of course it, it affected their life no matter what you do whether it's building pyramids, picking cotton, or some horrible job that you loathe. If you do something that you love, you're inevitably going to hate it. Um, it's inevitable. It's what I relate to in Artie. Um, there was a time in my life where I might have become a monk for the theater, mm. where I might not have had a personal life at all. And I know people like this. Uh, who have foregone any other kind of life for the sake of their of their work. I felt my work would improve if I stopped concentrating on it so much and, and did have um, marriage and children and it turned out, you know, I've been partners with Eleanor for 22 years and it's, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me is, is that I'm having these wonderful children in the same way, in a similar way, my relationship to um, the world of theater, the world of, of acting, directing, writing, working with actors, directors, writers, designers, whether it's film or theater or musicals or whatever, has uh, been all a part of my life since I was six years old. I fell in love with it. I fell in love with all aspects of it. And... And it, it is, in a sense, it, it was a religion, a religion that I decided not to become a monk in, that I, that 
it had its place. Hmm. And by giving it its place, I've, I think my relationship to it has uh, been healthier than it might otherwise have been, my opinion. Hmm. And um, well, then I you didn't... Can, you can bring something to it. By having a perspective, you bring something to it rather than just bowing down before it. I don't want to say that my friends who have no, uh, who are not married and have no children have a less a profound relationship to their work. Hmm. Uh, I think that I would have. Hmm. Um, and I, I suspect that I would have. But it's certainly not true of other people who have had no marriages and children. And some of the most profound artists that we've known have had neither in the state, you know? Hmm. So, so I don't know if there's a rule. I, I doubt it. I can only tell you that from, from my point of view, it's an evolving, sometimes devolving, frustrating, hate-filled, love-filled, joy-filled, um, difficult, wonderful uh, life uh, to, to continually uh, find new families to work with. And it is like that. Mm -hmm. As a director, yeah, directors find the same thing. Writers, not so much, unless they're in the theater, you know? <laughs> Um, and so you're constantly moving from one family to another, you know, and creating a brother, sisters, and, uh, and, and the whole recapitulation of a family uh, dynamic uh, constantly changes. And we have a family in Warehouse 13, and, and the same things that hold true in any family, you know, um, how you protect each other, how, you're, how you deal with each other, very similar, very, very similar. And um, your passion and your involvement my passion and my involvement and my commitment are fundamental to being able to give something to an audience that's worth giving. Mm. Uh, I found out a long, long time ago that unless I am passionately committed to what I do, I shouldn't be doing it because what I have to give them is not much. I'm only looking to get stuff. You know, we were talking about American Idol the other day and we we're looking at all these nervous contestants and I was saying to my son, you want to know how, and some of them can't take the pressure, and I've been under that kind of pressure a lot mm. all my life. And I said, you know how I learned to deal with the pressure? And he said, how? And I said, nerves come from thinking about what you're going to get. If you think about what you, is, what you want to give, and you've prepared for what you want to give, and you're concerned about how you're going to give what you're going to give, the nerves go away. Think about I'm here for a reason. It's not to get applause, get a job, get this money, get fame, get fortune. You know, it's about, I have this, this character to give you or this song to share with you or this piece of music, and, you know, to share with you too. You know, there's a, there's a, my father was um, uh, a Polish Jew who grew up in a Hasidic, Orthodox, ultra-religious home. And when he was, uh, 16 years old, he was already acting, but secretly he had to leave the Friday night Sabbath table and go off and be an actor, and his, he had to cut off his side curls, his pants, and, and one day his father stayed, you know, waited up for him, and uh, he had 11 brothers and sisters, and um, when he got home, his father said, you know, a friend of mine told me, and of course, not such a good friend, because he took a lot of pleasure telling me, <laughs> that you're, you're a show spieler that you're an actor. How is it possible that a son of mine could go so far away from God that could so go f so far from how he was brought up to do something so indecent and, 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 and you're the oldest and you have to set this example for the, your brothers and sisters and you, you, I want to understand how, how that's possible. And he was only 16, 17 maybe and he said, well, uh, Dad, I, I'm performing a play, it was all in Yiddish, I'm performing a play by a man called Shalom Aleichem, who was really considered like the Yiddish Mark Twain. And it's a play about husbands and wives and their families and how they struggle with their lives, and it's funny, and it's very moving, and the audience laughs, and they cry, and they sit, and they don't feel so alone, you know? They don't feel so alone after they've seen this play. And my father told me that his father said, well, then maybe it's not so far away from God after all. Um, good luck, and um, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheerio.